good morning, everybody. Very pleased to be here. Um, so also very pleased to be working with uh, Regina and uh, Vinod and um, other colleagues in the welcome uh, project. So I, I chose to talk about um, a project of mine that has been a constant, uh, um, constantly in my mind for many years. This is about liver allocation. In general, part of my work in trans organ transplant allocation. This is work that has been published um, a year and a half ago in the American Journal of Transplantation about an optimized prediction of mortality for liver transplant allocation. And um, as you will see, significant issues of equity and efficiency uh, are, uh, would enter the story. So liver transplantation is a treatment um, option for end stage liver disease and acute liver failure. It was first attempted uh, in the early 60s and the first successful liver transplantation happened in 67. Uh, in the 1970s, it was mostly experimental, um, but in the 1990s, it has been increasingly being utilized. And now it is performed at over 100 centers in the United States, as well as numerous centers in Europe and elsewhere. Uh, unfortunately, uh, th that's uh, the most recent data I found. There are many people who want transplants, but they don't get it. The waiting list for certain for organs, uh, let's look at liver, uh, in 2007, it's about 8,000 transplantations a year, but there are more than roughly 14,000 waiting. So, and some of them, unfortunately, will not survive because, unlike kidneys, liver, uh, there is no uh, there's no other treatment that you only have to do is uh, to get the transplantation. Uh, so, there are very many challenges on liver transplantation. For example, the the most important is the availability of donor organs. Uh, and livers are considered a national resource regulated by the United Network of Organ Sharing, UNOS for short. The key question is who should receive a liver that becomes available? And what the nation has decided is going to give it to the people who have the highest need. So assuming blood uh, compatibility, um, the, 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 the nation has decided to ask the following question. What is the probability that a patient will either die or become unsuitable for liver transplantation within three months, given his or her individual characteristics. As you realize, these are serious, serious questions. Uh, in particular, uh, because people that do not get a transplantation in the least typically do not survive. So issues of life and death are at stake. And the current method the nation is using is the so-called MELD score. MELD score is uh, a simple logistic regression model with three, three variables. Uh, that has been found since 2002 uh, to improve overall uh, the overall ranking before it was done more manually. So the, the MEL score, that is, an, is something that is calculated routinely, is to rank disease severity and priority for receiving a liver transplant. Um, and um, the, the, it has been working continuously for this period with some adjustments. But um, the, 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 the MELD score has some difficulties. For example, it is known, it's not my opinion, it's a, it's a well-documented fact that MELD underestimates the reach for female patients. MELD does not accurately capture the female candidate's degree of renal inefficiency based on serum creatinine level, which is one of the three factors that typically results in lower MELD scores and as a result, an underrepresentation of female patients in the transplantation uh, list. Also, second is that the male underestimates the risk for cancer patients. Uh, these patients often exhibit good hepatic function over long periods of time, leading, leading to values of creatinine, bilirubin, and I, uh, INR, the three factors of the male score that yield a low male score. As a result, the nation has uh, over, tried to overcorrect by sort of manually giving what is called exception points to cancer patients. So in other words, the, the, the male score is calculated and then exception points are given on a particular method, um, which is not fully tested uh, from a perspective of um, how accurate it is. And as I will indicate, it has overcorrected. In other words, even now we want the other extreme from underrepresentation to overrepresentation of cancer patients. So, so rather than doing that, we have, we have taken a machine learning approach. We utilize data uh, from, um, from UNOS um, and uh, o o OPTN is the Organ Procurement Transportation Network. 
So we received data from 2002-2016, about uh, 1.2 um, observations. These are different uh, uh, check-in visits for patients. And the question we would like to estimate through machine learning is exactly what Mel tries to estimate, namely whether or not a patient dies within three months. Try to give a more objective uh, assessment to the probability. The independent variables, I won't go over them in great detail, but they are data that is available for patients in demographic information. Some of the data that, um, that MELT is using, including the MELT score as well. Uh, so we have a, uh, data that is available um, and, uh, and some of them are either including the MELT score or the MELT score itself. We utilize a method, um, speaking about interpretability, a method that I devised with a former student of mine, 2017, Optimal Classification Trees. And it provides, um, I would say, definitely interpretable solutions, namely a, uh, an example of the, of the tree we provided. Uh, first is depth 10, but, uh, but uh, the first question actually is about the MELT score. So if the MELT score is above 20, uh, 28, and a half or higher, the MELT score goes from six to 40, and then it goes after that. So in other words, it's not that we did not utilize prior information, it is just that we are now using it in a more, in a more holistic uh, way. As I indicated, it does provide state of the art compared to other, other methods. This is the, the, the method we use, uh, the blue, this is over a prior method called classification regression trees. So this is a random forest, and uh, overall, the, the method holds its own and it's very interpretable. Interpretability is particularly relevant because when I, I had discussions with uh, my two co-authors, um, both are experts in transplantation. One is at uh, UCSF and used to, and currently and, and previously actually the head of the liver transplantation committee of UNOS and, an, and another physician at uh, Texas used to be at Mass General, Parcia Vagefi. Uh, we spent uh, at least two days going every, every single detail to convince them that this is understandable for patients. And what we have found is that the, the area under the curve, which is an indication of accuracy uh, for, uh, for patients, um, it, for, it, it has an edge, OPOM is optimized prediction of mortality, the one we're talking. As you will see, these numbers have, have an edge over, over existing methods. The most important edge is to what happens for patients that have a high MELT score, which is what is happening today. People that get organs are people that have a high MELT score. And on that, I would say the, uh, the edge is more substantial, uh, especially when ex exception points are given, the edge is uh, very significant because there has never been a, a full um, accuracy study of the exception scores. These are given heuristically without formal analysis. But the most important aspect of the story is that we have uh, developed, I'm sorry, we have developed a simulation system. Actually, the nation uses uh, a, simu a liver simulation allocation model that the nation have, um, is using to, uh, to when a policy is, is uh, proposed, the simulator is being utilized. And we observe that on average, compared to MELT historical simulations, we approximately uh, save 400 lives about 17% fewer deaths every year and across across the board. It's not that one year, every year we, uh, so these are deaths, the, 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 the orange is our methods, the, um, the blue is what is currently being used at the moment. Um, in addition, it also provides, because you would look at the, the geographic distribution, the benefit uh, between 13 and 22% of improvement in death rates, the average is about 17, 18%, but it's across the board in all states. So in other words, we achieve uh, this improvement across uh, different states. It's not a, an isolated effect. With respect to equity in gender, so uh, under much melt, you see that um, the, 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 the prior system does about 2,181 female patients and about 4,000 male patients. Our system does less male, more female patients. It does address the, the, the inequity, inequity there. And the reason is, is more because of more other variables capture, capture the overall effect. 
Um, finally, with respect to cancer, our system also corrects the, if you look at the transplantation uh, our system, because the previous system has overcorrected, has went all the way uh, HCC is cancer patients, we very significantly decrease it as it is appropriate because the system has overcorrected due to the heuristic nature of the correction. We are currently, we have presented the work to the UNOS Liver Committee uh, last year, and uh, we have another presentation soon, soon coming. Uh, we are in discussions for implementation as a national policy. Uh, it's not an easy task to do that, but uh, I'm obviously optimistic. Just to summarize some of the lessons learned, I have demonstrated, uh, hopefully, the importance of interpretability. Without the interpretability, despite the, the superior efficiency and accuracy of the predictions, the doctors, our collaborators, um, would not have been signed up. And when we presented in the committee, I have been asked multiple on multiple occasions to explain the interpretability of the method. In my opinion, interpretability is important in, uh, in healthcare. And, as a sta and without interpretability, you might not even understand you are biasing the data or the, the predictions. Uh, I do believe that machine learning, at least in this case, have, a have an edge over traditional ones. And this translates in significant effects, like saving lives and achieving more equitable allocations. And if you would like to experiment with this, we have a simple implementation at, uh, at this web, web address. Um, I try to do it in less than 15 minutes. I I think I might have succeeded. So I'm open to discussions or questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Demetrius. Uh, that was really a very, very um, um, enthusiastic and inspiring talk. So uh, just in the interest of time, I think we'll move ahead and we'll save all of the questions towards the end.